Britain could be a global leader in big data. We have the facilities and people to do that. It's a question of how we go about doing that. The US and the Australians are forging ahead in that respect, and certainly we would like to be part of that. So there are two elements that are key to this discussion. First, the need for collaboration between services, between operational teams, between the front line and the supply chain. Secondly, there is a need for leadership uh, to give direction to this strategy and ensure that the collaboration does happen. And let me just give you a brief example of uh, the leadership and collaboration in another industry. Um, and the industry is in health. Um, and basically, big data will bring benefits to tens of thousands of patients in Scotland, where this example lies, where the health service has taken a visionary view of the potential of big data to transform healthcare. And uh, EMC, along with a company called Iridia, are working with health authori authorities, academ academia, and clinicians to revolutionize the management of chronic health conditions using correlations of patient, clinical, and genomic data. So let's look back at the question in hand, and what is the potential and requirement for big data in defense? So the British military has long been a world-leading peacekeeping force. Um, as Trevor said, um, I was lucky enough to serve in the Royal Green Jackets, um, a unit that has sadly now been amalgamated into the rifles. Um, and part of the reason for that, um, and that it was forced, was to rationalize in the face of increasingly tight financial constraints. And these financial constraints, whether you sit on the political spectrum, will cause real and present issues for our armed forces. An annual budget of 36 billion isn't as substantial as it sounds when one considers the extent of Britain's interests and our continuing ambition to play a leading role in world affairs. There will be many ways in which the military will seek to tackle these fiscal and operational challenges. Our interest as EMC comes from one particular perspective, how better use of information could streamline and improve the armed forces effectiveness operationally and financially to save money in our lives. And our shorthand of this, of this is termed as big data, as Liz was saying. For those of you who don't know anything about us, and this is our plug for EMC, um, we're a $22 billion firm. We have over 2,000 staff in the UK. And our mission is to help store, manage, and automate information and take meaning from that information. So one of the key trends we're gearing up to meet is being brought about by the rise of what's called the third platform, as uh, Liz um, articulated, the third platform of computing, where organizations faced with the rapid growth of data from social media, mobile devices, and internet-based devices um, force the need for rapid change and for flexibility. And this is where you have billions of users and potentially billions of applications. Um, in defense, the rise of sensors for telemetry, surveillance, and beyond things uh, and, and beyond brings the Internet of Things to the battlefield and operational arena. Organizations throughout the public and the private sector are working hard to transform themselves to cope in this context and trying to figure out how to make sense and drive value from the large volumes and rapid flows of real-time data within and around their operations. This is why this year, in partnership with VMware and General Electric, we founded a new company called Pivotal. Um, and Pivotal is focused on developing new technologies and platforms that change our ability to manage massive quantities of information, such as those dealt with by the military. And big data analytic technologies are a fast developing field, and these tools are crucial components in dealing with the information overload we're facing in both the private, uh, private sector and in defense. And we believe that we in the private sector as well as the defense sector are at a crossroads. This third platform of computing isn't something we have a choice about. It is becoming a reality of the operations of, of any modern organization. And we always look at you know, how people and organizations have to manage that plethora of data. And what Liz referenced around skills is a key component to that skills and understanding. And in the defense and security sectors, consider the following scenarios, some of which Liz has already mentioned. The volume of data produced by the burgeoning numbers of unmanned systems, 
For example, a medium altitude, long endurance system such as Reaper MQ-9 or Watchkeeper can collect between 20 to 40 laptops worth of data per sortie. Much of this information is only retrospectively analyzed. And in these circumstances, can we be sure of extracting the maximum value and insight from this data and not missing that vital needle in the haystack until it's too late? The US Air Force has a big data challenge, and our US colleagues are assisting them in coping with their ISR data problem. Current airborne ISR data, uh, sensors generate vast amounts of data, particularly wide area, area imaging technologies. And not only are the file sizes large um, with wide area imaging, but the ability to detect movements adds to the data density of what is being processed. Um, and here are some stats. There are lots of noughts in this. But in a test case, during a 15-minute span, one wide area um, imaging platform picked up 4 million detections and 200,000 tracks. And for this particular evaluation, it took approximately two months to manually catalyze, catalog these detections and tracks, two months. And the US Air Force has a limited number of analysts and must sort through this data quickly. EMC is developing an architecture that takes advantage of storage, analytics, and virtualization technologies to help customers sort through this vast amount of data in a much more timely and effective manner. We face similar challenges here in the UK. Video surveillance data can also help agencies allocate their resources more effectively. Data analytics makes connections and finds relationships among seemingly unrelated data, reducing the need for human intervention. Ultimately, humans cannot analyze and correlate this information quick enough. Um, with the capability to point organizations to the right directions, uh, analytics can save money and it can save manpower. Another example, the Chicago Police Department has found great success recently in using data analytics to predict where shooting and violent crimes will occur. By deploying officers and assets to these locations, Chicago has seen a dramatic decline in homicides and criminal activity in recent months. Several pilots are happening here in the UK. And imagine applying this to battlefield operations using surveillance data. This could equally apply to the complexity and challenges of managing their $160 billion defense equipment plan, with recent National Audit Office reports suggesting a lack of robust challenge and review of the planning assumptions around support costs, which make up more than half of this total, and significant wastage of up to $6 billion in MOD's management of its, inf of its um, inventory supplies and spares. I'd like to, take, um, to, to make a few specific comments on the findings of this, re of this report and what we, as EMC, think it means for the MOD and the armed forces. It is fantastic that the MOD has already recognized the potential of big data. Its network technical authority has a draft vision for it within its defense information strategy. We need to build on this strategy now to seize the opportunity that new technology has to offer to understand the risks and the benefits involved in exploiting big data. And we hope the MOD and JFC will take on the driving role in championing a big data capability, as Rusi suggests, to build the case for exploiting it in different areas. Pilot programs will be key to this, and skills will need to be developed among armed forces personnel. In mon modern combat scenarios, a data scientist helping to interpret and analyze data could save many more lives than putting hundreds of troops on the ground. Of course, I for one know exactly how much data you get as a troop on the ground from the perspective, because it is severely lacking. Mind you, I am talking 10 years ago. So. Of course, there will be complexity and challenges in preparing infrastructure, changing mindsets, introducing skills and understanding, and ensuring that the use of big data is handled responsibly and sensitively with regards to individual privacy and protection. 
This is why leadership and collaboration is so important. We do recognise the budgetary constraints facing the MOD and, and the armed forces, and like every other branch of the public service, which is subject to the same level of Treasury scrutiny as Britain faces up to its deficit and cost-cutting challenges. However, we believe this is a fundamental capability and that big data has a significant role to play in increasing the armed force efficiency and effectiveness and help ensure a brighter, safer future. Thank you very much for your time. Well, two presentations there that raised, I think, a huge number of issues, um, certainly in my mind, and so if I, I, I would expect them to be raised in some of your minds as well. Can we, can we take some questions? If when you want to ask a question, perhaps you could just identify yourself so we get a, a sense of uh, where you're coming from. <laughs>